Okay, so we are officially live in our webinar, just waiting for attendees uh, to join before we really get started. So welcome to today's webinar about studying international business in Germany. You see many faces on your screen today. We have a lot of guest speakers here to talk to you about some different programs. Before we get started, I just want to quickly um, do a little introduction for you so you can see who we have here with us today. Shortly, I'll hand it over to my colleague from my German university, Nino, who will be moderating. Um, but today we have uh, first um, Katharina Ging, who is the International Sales Manager at the Cologne Business School. We have also um, another Katharina, Katharina Günther, and she's the Program Manager um, for the uh, Master of Science in International Finance from Nürtingen Geislingen University. We also have Nikila um, Raghaven, for, who is the Academic Coordinator at the School of Business, Economics and Society at FAU. Um, Elange Nuenberg, and I will tell you all about these universities shortly and where they are if you're wondering. And finally, we have Eva Bleisteiner, who's from the Communications and Marketing Department of the School of Business, Economics and Society at the F. Uh, we also have with us um, Lizzie Rao, who is also going to be uh, partnering with us today and talking about um, F. Uh, as well. Okay, so. Before we get started today, I will go ahead and um, say bye to our guest speakers. They're going to be back with us shortly. They each have a presentation for you. Um, if you have questions, though, already start asking them because all of our guest speakers today can see your questions and have access to them. So shortly, I will share the link in the chat section to our first guest speaker for, um, for the program that they're going to talk about. So you can already start looking at the program and getting your questions ready. If you're joining us on Zoom, welcome. You can send your questions using the Q&A function in Zoom. And um, all of our guest speakers and Nino and myself can see them and answer them. And if you're joining us on Facebook, which hopefully surely will be connected, um, you can do that by leaving a comment below the video. So um, I think, Nino, um, if you are ready, she's going to give us a brief intro about my German university. Hi, everyone. I just mean I wasn't able yet to do it, I'll but I'll continue, I'll continue later on. So um, hello, everyone, again. Uh, my name is Nino. I'm a team uh, member of my German university already for six months, which has been a great, great experience because we have been helping so many international students to get their way through this education system in Germany. So today I think there is a wonderful lineup of speakers and uh, Jasmine as a host will be um, kind of going through all those speakers and uh, giving you a best of the uh, information you will need today. So really, really briefly, I won't take a lot of your time. I will uh, say about um, my German university. First of all, um, it's the largest database of English taught study programs uh, in Germany. And uh, you can use this uh, study finder, which is special and unique uh, since um, it has all the different filters. And uh, with those, you can really easily find the best programs that suits your requirements and that for which you are um, the one that you are searching because you can filter programs uh, by language. Even, for example, if you already have ILTS or TOEFL and their grade, you can even indicate that. So this will make your search way easier and it's a great opportunity to use. So I really highly recommend using uh, the filters of and like playing around those filters um, when searching for study programs in, in Germany. Um, another very interesting thing about my German university is the uh, articles that we have for international students and not only uh, because those articles are really comprehensive and they provide uh, very detailed information on different things like living in Germany, about costs, uh, also cities, online studies, rankings, scholarships, uni assist, and those articles um, are also, it's really also important to note that those articles are updated uh, all the time. So you have the newest information possible. And um, 
the, uh, during the webinars, um, you can get answers to your questions always, but also you can have a look to those articles and there are more than 70 uh, articles currently on our web page. Another unique thing is our webinars, which are 150 uh, per year. And actually they are in multiple languages, so as the uh, articles and the webinars are on different subjects. It would be application strategies, COVID update, visa, scholarships, subject webinars, the one you are attending today. Uh, so make sure to uh, register and have an eye on the upcoming webinars because they are really informative and you have a unique chance, for example, today to ask specific questions to the um, representatives of the universities or our uh, colleagues from my German university. So it's a great opportunity. And uh, our team, which is very international, even though the Michigan University is German startup, it's in, based in Hamburg, uh, but the counseling uh, that we provide are in different languages, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, Italian, and uh, our team members even speak some other languages, so you, know, you can ask us <laughs> in the languages that we do speak, so we can answer your uh, questions. Now, I'll not... Uh, take your time anymore. Uh, I will go behind the scenes answering your questions. Um, and I wish you all very productive webinars. And bye-bye. Thanks for that, Nino. Um, thank you. So I now will take over and give a very short presentation about um, general studying international business in Germany, how you find a study program, what the programs are like, and um, then I'll hand it over to our guest speakers. So um, very quickly, a little bit about me. Um, if you can't tell by my lovely accent, I'm not originally from Germany. I am from the U.S. and I came here six years ago when I was awarded a research fellowship from the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. They are a funding organization based in Bonn in Germany. Um, there I did a research fellowship at a think tank here in Berlin, where I'm joining you from now, um, on research about data protection and cyber security policies within the EU and transatlantic as well. Following that, I did a master's in international relations and global governance, and now I'm helping inform students how they can take a similar path that I did and come to Germany and study and find the perfect study program for themselves. And as Nino mentioned, we are an international team and um, you can always email us if you have questions in whatever language um, you speak. Um, Spanish is my native language, for example, we host webinars in Spanish and our articles are also translated to different languages. So whatever language you're most comfortable with, reach out to us and um, we can see if we can help you. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to have a very quick um, five minute presentation about very general studies and then we're going to hand it over to our guest speakers and so each of them have prepared a presentation for you as well they're going to give you some key information about these study programs and shortly um nino may actually nino if you don't mind already doing that if you could share the link to the first study program the ma for international business that would be great from cbs uh, cb uh yes cbs okay um, the Cologne Business School. And uh, then you should keep an eye in the chat because Mino will continue to send the links to the upcoming course websites of the study programs that will be presented. That way you can prepare your questions and have them answered by our experts from these institutions. Okay, so first, where do you find a study program? So I'm going to recommend two key places for you to find a study program, though I'm sure there are many more places that you can find a study program in Germany. So the first resource I want to share with you is going to be especially relevant for German uh, taught programs. So if you're an international student and you want to come to Germany in a program that is taught in German, you can absolutely do that. You can study in German or in English. The only thing you need to do is have a language certificate to demonstrate your abilities in that language. So if you want to study in German, that's wonderful. And this is where you can find German taught study programs. So Hochschule Campus is the official database offered by the German Rector's Conference, which is the official I would say institution for German higher education um, here in Germany. So 
they're going to be the best resource. The Hochschule Campus a database, when you're searching, if you're searching for German taught programs, you're likely going to be searching in German. And there has been, I think, a little glitch with the website, which Nino did mention to me um, before we started today. And so I would advise you um, to search in German for those German taught programs, because um, I think maybe there aren't as many results if you search in English. So that's just a little tip from us. But um, this is going to be your best resource if you want to study in German. And you can see here that they have 190 programs for international business, 87 of those in English. Um, if you are looking for studying in a program that is taught in English, then of course I'm going to recommend our database. Just note that there are different ones. The DAAD has one, for example, the um, Hochschule Campus. You can also search for English taught programs. You can feel free to use whichever databases you want. The only reason I recommend ours is because it is the largest and most comprehensive. So we have the most English taught programs on our platform. Um, you can feel free to cross compare them, but um, this is where you'll find the most of them in one place. And you can see here that there are 120 degree programs for international business, 47 bachelors and 73 masters. Um, note that if you are looking for a program that is only taught in English, make sure you select English only in the filters because there are programs that have a mix of German and English, and we also have those on our platform. So if you're looking for English only, just select that while you're searching. Okay, so uh, our subjects page has a brief overview. Some things that are important for students when it comes to finding their perfect institution are rankings, um, how much tuition you're going to have to pay, what are the application and admissions requirements, and what are the language requirements. The first thing I want to mention is, um, depending on where you're joining us from, rankings when it comes to higher education institutions might be very important and they might not be important at all. Um, something for you to know about the German higher education system is that there are rankings and that there are internationally ranked institutions, but these rankings are not considered incredibly important um, within Germany. So typically students who, um, if you run into another student, you aren't going to ask them where they're studying, but maybe what they're studying. And international um, and, and these kind of nationally ranked institutions, it's not quite as important here as maybe where I'm from in the US where everyone wants to know where you studied, not what you studied. And so just keep that in mind while you're searching um, for, for ranked institutions if that's important to you. Another thing to look at is tuition fees. Many international students are interested in coming to studying in Germany because typically uh, public universities do not charge tuition fees. That is very much true, but just note that there is an exception to that, and there are some very specialized programs that will charge tuition fees. The German state of Baden-Württemberg charges 1,500 euros per semester for international students as a tuition fee, and private universities will also charge tuition fees. So um, just keep that in mind when you're searching for programs. Don't think, wait, I was told it was free. I see fees here. What is that? Um, not all programs are going to have um, free tuition. And even so, there are some semester contributions um, that all students have to pay, whether you're in a tuition-free program or not. It's just general. Finally, application and um, admissions requirements are incredibly important. That's going to tell you if you're eligible to apply. And finally, no matter what program you want to study in, whether it's in German or English, you must have a language certificate to demonstrate your abilities in that language. English, maybe a Cambridge certificate, IELTS or TOEFL, things like this. And I will mention it once more. <laughs> Be sure to look for the right university program for you, not just the university name, the city it's located in. Don't just look at tuition free programs um, unless it's incredibly relevant for you in your um, finances. But don't just look at rankings or think, oh, well, I, I can only study in Berlin because I just want to study there. Um, keep an open mind. I lived in Berlin for two years and I loved it. Um, I was accepted to a program here at a great um, at a private university. But ultimately, I ended up choosing a different one in a smaller city. And I love the experience there. I am back in Berlin now, um, but I wouldn't have changed that. So don't think, OK, well, I have to stay in a city or it has to be this top ranked university. Keep an open mind out and make sure you get the program that's right for you. 
pace. So some things to note about the different um, um, universities here. There's generally two different systems. Um, very generally, there's also subcategories. One is there's a university or universität, and I have some examples of that here, and there's private and public ones. And there's also a Fachhochschule, and there's also private and public um, universities of applied sciences, and I have some examples here. Just quickly, because I want to wrap up so we have enough time for our guest speakers, they have some things in common, and the only uh, difference is going to be in the learning style you might be looking for. Um, for example, more research intensive programs might be at a university, whereas universities of applied sciences might have more practical uh, based programs that have maybe a traineeship incorporated, something like this. One is not better than the other. So if you're thinking what's going to get me a job, which certificate is better from which place, that doesn't matter. They are equal and you don't have to worry about that. Universities um, have the right to confer um, doctoral programs, but this is changing. And you, many universities of applied sciences have these programs now and partner also with universities to host these programs. So that's something to keep in mind for you. Um, if you're wondering what the difference is, that's the biggest one. And this is also changing a bit, so it won't be quite as relevant. And finally, this is just a brief overview for you. As you're searching, um, make sure to look at the main things for you, which is how long a program is, um, if it charges tuition, and the deadlines. That's the most important part. OK, so now let's hand it over to our first special guest for today. So we have Katarina Ging from the Cologne Business School. And I add a map just to make sure you know where Cologne is for those students who don't. We have that for each of our programs. I actually lived in Bonn for three months, and I love Cologne. I would go every weekend. <laughs> um, so I'm really happy to have you. So let's hand it over now to Katarina. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Thank you very much for the brief introduction. I think it's um, especially for CBS really important that um, all the participants uh, do know that we do have this public and private university and applied university system in Germany because CBS is one of the private universities of applied science. But I will just share my presentation now um, that you can... So, whoop. I hope you can all see my screen now. I will just start the presentation itself. So hopefully, I guess all of you can see my presentation now. So again, thank you so much for, well, firstly, having me today. And secondly, that all of you are participating today to get to know um, not only about Germany and studying in Germany, but different options you're especially having when it comes up to studying international business um, in Germany. So I will just give you a very quick and brief introduction about what it's like to study at CBS International Business School. We are having not only, of course, the International Business Master track, but different tracks. But today I'm going to like focus more on what is um, special about studying international business at CBS. So um, just to, to get or to give you an idea what is or who are we, what is CBS International Business School, how many, and just that you get, get an idea um, what CBS is all about. So as I said already in the beginning, we are a private university of applied science. We are quite small compared to other universities. Just to give you an example, we do have a big uni public university in Cologne, which has, I think, more than 25,000 students. So compared um, to, to this number, of course, we are quite small, but cozy, I would say. So we are having more like a family life going on when you're studying with us. And um, I think we are quite young university, again, compared to other public universities in Germany. So we were funded in 1993. And we were one of the first universities in Germany who offered the bachelor and master program. So in Germany, it changed a couple of years ago ago so that most of the German programs are now bachelor's and master programs but it used to be different before and um, since um, we do have some UK roots <laughs> we already started the bachelor and master program right from the beginning at CBS. 
Um, additionally, we are having a very international focus. So 30% um, of our students are international students. And especially when you're looking on our master program, we do have, um, I would say it's rather 50% of our students are having an international background. So this is making um, studying at CBS quite not unique, but I would say quite diverse, multicultural. And I think it's usually um, yeah, a, a, a good or active life going on when you're having on, on uh, when you're studying with us on campus. I'm, I'm a little bit struggling because currently, of course, we're having a pandemic. So I'm talking about not like about the last year, um, but about what it's like usually studying at CBS. Um, and we do have a main focus when it comes up for um, connecting you to, let's say, the real working life after your studies. So we have a huge network um, with more than 700 companies, starting with startups and going up to the big players like Google or other examples. So there's a wide range and usually students can have an insight in all of these different kind of, of companies. Um, yeah, since last year, we are having a new name and a new logo and a new branding. Maybe you heard of us before. We used to have the name Cologne Business School, and now we are called CBS International <laughs> Business School. This was because we merged two universities last year to one name and to one university. We used to be a family before, but we had different names. And last year we decided, okay, even before Coroma, it made sense to maybe reunite us as one name, as one university. And this is why we're having this no, new slogan, Creating Tomorrow, and our new name, CBS International Business School. Good. So these are, I would say, the main three headlines when it comes up um, what it's unique um, in studying at CBS International Business School. As I said, we do have a main focus on internationality in general. That means we do have seven or even more than 75 nationalities, I would say, on campus. Um, and it's very important that we're not focusing on a specific continent or a specific region. So for us, it's important that we have a huge diversity on campus. So we're having students from Latin America, from Mexico. We do have students from Taiwan, from Japan, from South Africa. So I would say from, of course, from Europe as well, but I would say from yeah, mostly everywhere in the world, except of the Antarctic. That's usually what we are saying. <laughs> They're usually students are not coming from. And um, in addition, we do have international events going on on campus. As I said, I'm talking about the before Corona area. <laughs> so uh, we are organizing usually um, regular events for um, or just to give you an example, we do have a Latin American night where students from Latin America are sharing their music, their food with the other students, not only with the German students, but with other international students to have an interaction going on. That you get to know different parts of the world, different people, and that you have more of these, um, as I said, CBS family life on campus. And of course, um, since we're offering English and German taught programs, even if you're deciding to study in an English taught program, you can learn German and we offer German language training. In some of our programs, it's already included um, in the modules and the courses. And in some of our programs, it's not included, but nevertheless, you will still have the chance to attend one of the German language courses. So we're offering different levels starting from the very beginning. So even if you're studying in English, technically you do not need to know one single word in Germany to, in German to survive in Germany. This is usually what I'm saying. Of course, it's really making sense <laughs> to have some, let's say basic idea or basic knowledge um, what the German language is all about. When you're looking up doing grocery shopping, of course, it makes sense to, to at least have some basic phrases, some basic sentences, and some basic communication you can use for your daily life in Germany. And in addition, we do have a study abroad um, program that's possible. It's not in the master's degree I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. It's not mandatory, but you can do it if you would like to do. For not all of our international students, it's 
let's say, that interesting to study in Germany and going abroad again during the fall semester, but it's possible for you. If you would like to, maybe when you're coming from the United States and you would like to do a semester abroad within the European Union, because it's very, of course, I can recommend it. And it's um, yeah very easy to just go from one country, let's say to the Netherlands, from Cologne, it's just 40 minutes and you can cross the border. But of course, it's not necessary. Then we do have um, a huge focus on our, let's say, hands-on mentality. So usually our professors are coming from the economy and some of them are still freelancers and consultants are, and are still working. So they are bringing the experiences into the classroom. And usually you are working on real existing, let's say problems and issues and challenges. So this is why it's making it very practical and very hands-on orientated. Um, when you're sitting in the classroom. So it's not this, um, the teacher coming into the classroom and talking for hours and leaving again. It's more like an interaction going on between the teachers and the students and the students themselves. And we do have a huge personal um, focus. I hope that it's already became clear <laughs> during the first sentences. So since we're having small classrooms, not more than 36 people in one classroom, um, usually you know your study group after the first semester, I would say. And it's a pretty easy when I'm, when I'm browsing through the, the campus, usually I can, um, I can name most of the students um, and say, hello, Jose, how are you today? And sometimes the students are shocked, but I, I think most of them are, are pretty happy when they know, okay, they know me. Good. So just very quickly, we do have three campuses. Um, so the main one is in Cologne and we do have one in Mainz, which is close to Frankfurt. And the third one, um, which is our new baby, which is starting or where our first group is starting this year, um, which is in Potsdam, it's quite close to Berlin. Usually it takes you, let's say to the very city center of Berlin, it takes you honestly 30 to 40 minutes from Potsdam um, railway station. Um, and you can study international business um, at Cologne campus or on Potsdam campus. Um, these are the uh, two campuses where we are offering English taught programs at, at the moment. So if you would like to study in Mainz, which is a quite cozy and, um, yeah, cozy and small city compared to the other one too, um, this probably will be possible in the future, but at the moment I cannot tell when it will be possible. So currently it's possible in Cologne and in Potsdam. Okay, so let's start with the, let's say, main focus of today. This is um, the International Business Program, which is a Master of Arts program. I, well, here you can see at a glance what it's all about, the most important facts you um, need to know about the study program itself. As I said, we're offering this program on our Cologne and Potsdam campus. And it's a usually ECTS points of 120 program. This is a typical Master of Arts program, um, which takes you four semesters. And after the four, uh, fourth semesters, you will have your master degree certification. So technically, you're having 30 ECTS per semester you need to, let's say, you need to do. So um, it's a combination of exams and um, business papers and projects and presentations. Um, so it's not all of them um, exams in the end. Since I said we're very practical orientated, so some of the credits you will gain for having presentations in front of different companies, for example. The language of instruction is English in this program. As I said, we have German taught programs. So if you're interested in studying in German language with us, I will share my email address after the presentation with you. And then you can um, get in touch with me right away if you're interested in some of our uh, German taught programs, of course, as well. Okay. So this is what a typical study course plan in our master program looks like in the full-time program. So typically it's a four semester program. Um, the fourth semester will start at the end, not at the beginning. Um, the fourth semester is a very um, typical and unique um, semester, I would say, at CBS, since you're focusing on your master thesis and you can choose whether you would like to combine um, your master thesis with an internship you're doing with a company. So you can choose um, or you can get, um, let's say, some support 
um, from our career center. When you're looking for an internship, they will look on your application documents and we have a huge network, of course, you can use and you can um, get access to it, of course, anytime during your studies. Um, to, to make it easier for you finding an internship. But it's only if you want and need it. So it's not necessary. You don't have to use our network. But of course, it's um, yeah quite convenient, I would say. Um, or if you would not, or if you would like to, or if you're preferring to do a study abroad instead of an internship while you're writing your master thesis, this is possible as well. So technically, you can choose. Maybe would do I... Uh, or do I do an internship and write my thesis or do I semester abroad with one of the partner universities and write my thesis while being abroad? Well, this is something up to you. You can decide. You, know, you don't have to decide from the very beginning. You can start um, yeah, deciding during your second semester. This is absolutely fine. But as you can see, we do have three different sections um, divided in the program. We do have our business skills which are typically international business, business related topics. Then we do have our program specifics. These are our elective courses where you can choose in different specializations, such as digital transformation management. We do have digital marketing courses. This is something which is up to you. You can decide what do I want to yeah, focus on while studying international business in general. And as I said, in addition, we do have German language training included in this program and soft skills training. So as an example, you can work on um, your elevator pitching skills or you can work on your general presentation skills when you're standing in front of a company uh, staff, just an example. So these courses are, um, yeah, are different and you can decide what I would like to focus on with my soft skills. So as I said, we are practical oriented. So um, we do have a various or different kind of a practical orientation while doing the master's program with us. So just to sum it up, we do have um, mini projects, we have business projects, we have capstone courses and projects. And these, um, this is when companies are coming to CBS and offering or bringing challenges and issues in the classroom. These are not like artificial um, issues or problems. Um, these are real existing problems and issues you are working on. So you can be sure that after you worked on this project, it will be kind of used in the company itself, which makes it very interesting when you're looking on a website afterwards and you see, okay, this is something I, I was working on as well. And sometimes it's a great, great connector to maybe your future internship, of course, as well. So I'm just looking on the time to just speed it up slightly a bit. Um, so this is just an example of what a typical business project or mini project looks like. So we had a, um, a project with the Deutsche Bahn. Maybe you've heard about it. It's a, um, the biggest German um, re, uh, train trans transportation system um, company. So it's, it's run partly by the government. So it's kind of... I would say difficult to explain how it's exactly working because it's a huge company all in all with different agencies within. Um, but they ask our students the question, okay, what do you think, how does traveling look like in 2030 when you're looking on traveling by train within Germany? And this was a real existing qu question our students worked on. So. The first part was all about getting, let's say, basic knowledge about innovation management, what it's, what it's about innovation man management, how do I work on a project when it comes up to, to innovation and frameworks and things like that. And as a second part, the students were, let's say, um, yeah, were kind of activated and they had to work on this project. Okay, how, how do I think traveling with Deutsche Bahn looks like in 2030. So um, this was just as an example, one of the business projects where currently Deutsche Bahn is still working on the ideas they got from the students are now integrated into, let's say, the business plan for traveling in, in 2030. Okay, so I would say if I'm looking in the time, I'm already talking for 15 hours and I'm, I don't want to, let's say, steal time from the other uh, other presenters today, I would say I would just 
quit it for now and maybe afterwards when you're having questions in regards to our admission process and maybe I can share some let's say information in the chat as well um, just that we're not <laughs> wasting the time or the time of, of the other participants of course thank you so much if you're having any questions you are very welcome to to join the question and answer session afterwards I will be there thank you so much Perfect. Thank you for so much for that, uh, Katarina, and for respecting everyone's time. I also went over Absolutely. two minutes, so it's okay. Thank you so much. And, and we can talk about the admissions process also in the Q&A if students have questions about that. Um, so next, I will um, hand it over to our next presenter for today, um, Katarina Günther, and uh, she's going to talk about the program that we have from Nürtigen Geislingen. And here again, I have a map of Germany, so you can see where um, the uh, Nürtigen uh, Geislingen University is, for those of you who are not quite as familiar with the German uh, map. So um, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, thank you very much for your introduction and a warm welcome to all of you as well from me. My name is Katarina and I'm the coordinator or program manager of the International Finance Master at the New Team Geisling University. So let's first check, I'll try to share my screen so that you see my presentation. I hope everyone sees it. Okay. Yes, everything is good. Okay, great. Thank you. So I'm going to give you first a quick overview of the Hafi Unit in Geisling University. Then I'll talk a little bit about the International Finance Master, your career opportunities, and I hope I will get to the application and admission a little bit. So as you've already seen, you can find us at the center of Europe and we are quite lucky that we share a border with so many beautiful countries and the university itself is situated in the southwest of Germany and uh, it's really nice that that we are like kind of center and foreign countries are not that, not that far away from us. So let's get some points on our university. It was our university is also University for Plant Science. It was founded in 1949 as a agricultural university or college. So it was always um, focused on sustainability and nature, but since then it has diversified its options. We have around 5,000 students of which approximately 300 are international. We have 32 full-time degree programs and 18 part-time degree programs. And um, most of them are quite small. Like, I think one of the largest lecture halls in our faculty building, which is quite new, which is only a couple of years old, is for about 150 students, but that's usually for the bachelor degree. So especially if you're taking a master course, the group size is not more than 30 students. So this is really good because you have like interaction, closer interaction with your study group, but also with your professors and with staff. Um, you are not just a number for us, so this is a really good environment for, for studying. Okay, um, the, the official name of our university, which is also quite important, is Hochschule für Wirtschaft und Umwelt, and that basically translates to University of Applied Science for, for Economics, um, Sustainable Development and, and uh, Development and Environment. So that means that all of our professors, before they start working for us, have practical experience. But it also means that our university is a local, is a partner for local businesses in the region, but is also rooted in social responsibility and a sustainable development um, for the region. The next one, yeah, we also have a safe study environment for students. And we are really close to the Stuttgart metropolitan area. Stuttgart is the capital of Baden-Württemberg. And it's around 30 minutes away by train. So that's really good. So in general, Nürtingen is a small city. It's surrounded by nature. But as you could see on, on the previous slide, um, larger cities and foreign destinies are really not that far away from us. Okay, now let's get to some key facts of our International Finance Master. 
It was established in 2004 and it's one of the oldest English taught masters in the area of business in Germany. We have three semesters. This is one and a half years and 90 ECTS. ECTS are European credits. It's completely in English. You don't have to have German language skills to start and around 40 to 50, depends on the year, 40 to 50 percent of our students are international students. We also start only once a year towards the end of September or beginning of October and our study group is really small. So officially we only have 25 study places and our group is usually 20 to 30 students. So it's, it's, really, a, it's really a nice study environment. You do have close interactions with your professors. Um, and recently the master programs in our faculty, the Faculty of Business Administration and International Finance, which also includes our master program, received very good grades for its master programs in business studies. And the CHE ranking is one of the largest um, evaluations in Germany. So we are, we are really happy about that as well. Now let's take a closer look on how the everyday studies at our university in the master program look like. Well, it's first of all in a application and solution oriented way and in general a more practical approach because as I said before, we are University of Applied Science, so we do focus on that. So for instance, during your lectures, you often, um, you're often expected to have your laptop with you. And then students are confronted with topics or with challenges, questions that are coming from the real financial industry, usually in form of case studies and projects. And then students try to solve them with their own models, financial models. They get, of course, help and guidance from the professors, but this is how it usually works. So lectures are often based on, on financial modeling, but this then, of course, consolidated by learning the theory behind it so that everything is strengthened. So we, we focus not only on practice, but theory is also very important for us. A further specification is that we, we try not to think in sections and divisions. So for instance, the dean of the master program who kind of makes the concept for it, Professor um, Dr. Ernst, he usually refers to the master as a house of finance without walls. So that, for instance, um, you have lectures such as portfolio management or bond analysis, company valuation, and students will acquire a toolkit and learn that these topics are interconnected so that stuff you learn in risk management can be applied to equity analysis and so on. So for us, it's not primarily um, important that students become a risk management specialist or a derivative specialist but for us it's important and students will be able to start in, in various financial sectors so it means that on the one hand you will learn the theory you will learn the standard financial models you will learn about complete capital markets but on the other hand um, we do recognize that we are living in a changing environment and for us it's equally important that students learn to um, learn to apply everything on imperfect markets and learn to adopt and work in a changing environment. That's really important as well. So now let's get a more structured view of your modules. Basically, it works like that. You have in your first semester 30 European credits. You have four modules and each of the module is divided into two or three lectures. So for instance, you'll have financial modeling, you have strategic management, you have intercultural and conflict management. We cannot stress enough how important it is to have social skills and to be able to work with different kinds of people. But you also have designing and publishing empirical research and business studies and so on. So this is the first semester, 30 European credits. The second semester is quite similar in its structure. And you will have um, four modules, 30 European credits, and each module is divided into two or three lectures. So for instance, mergers and acquisitions, empirical finance, corporate finance on imperfect capital markets, 
derivatives and so on. And, and they, are, they are all interconnected. So also what is important around 60 to 70% of your lectures will be given by full-time professors who are working full-time at our university. And the rest is given by external lecturers who are working outside. So they are working at a company, at a bank, they are working independently, and they will give you an insight into their field of work. This is very important if you are, if you are studying at the University of Applied Sciences. Now, what is also really important to, to mention is that this is a full-time master and uh, it has a really high workload. It's interconnected, there will be group works, you'll have presentations, papers, written exams, and lecturers generally expect active participation, preparation. This is more like a seminar, so um, it's really important that you are interested in the topics and that you are willing to participate. But the outcome and everything you learn, I think, or we think that the experience will be worth it. Okay, so now one year has passed, um, you achieve 60 ECTS after one year with us, and basically we have option one is, which most students do, is they remain at our university and they attend the Innovation in the Financial Industry module, which is about, um, it's about, well, general transformations in the, in the financial sector and new forms of financing and they can also start working on their master thesis this is option one but for those students who would like to deepen their knowledge in a specific topic or diversify we also have the studies abroad as a free mover option um, and that means that you apply independent from our university to a to a program abroad and after finishing it we recognize one semester towards our international finance master, so that in the end you have those 90 ECTS. There are some requirements, but overall that's quite easy. You can do it worldwide. We actually used to have an obligatory semester abroad in, in Wales, but because of popular demand from especially international students who wanted to stay in Germany, because Germany is already abroad for them, but also from German students, we now rather focus on option one, but um, we also have um, within the Erasmus program opportunities for you, for instance, at the University of Pisa uh, in Italy, the University of Luzern in Switzerland to spend one semester there. So that's possible as well. Okay, so now I have some time left. It's good. A little bit about your career prospects. Um, what comes next? What can you do after you finish? And yeah, as always, there is no clear path that you have to follow. It depends on your interests and depends what you did before in your bachelor degree. But overall, when you finished your program with us here, then you can start in consulting, you can start portfolio management, bank management, and so on. When you think about the job opportunities in our region, so in Baden-Württemberg especially, and there are, of course, these well-known global players such as Daimler, Porsche, Bosch, and so on. So the automobile industry is really important for us. And um, with those global players, it's actually quite easy to start your career, even if you don't know or have almost non-German language skills. Um, Right now, it's quite difficult, to be honest, because of the pandemic, but before um, COVID-19, actually, a lot of our students did an internship or started working with Daimler in Bosch in particular. But what we also have in our region are these so-called hidden champions. And these hidden champions are mostly small and middle-sized companies, and they are not that well known, for instance, because they, um, they have products that are in the manufacturing process, and they end up being um, they end up being just part of the end product, so the customer doesn't really see it, or they focus on a particular market niche. But because they are so specialized, usually they are they're dependent on finding customers all around the world. So they also have a demand for students who have who are well educated and who have international experience. 
And I've just mentioned like um, Bionic is, for instance, a world leader in woodworking machines. So again, engineering, Helen Knecht constructs tunneling systems. Karl Storz is a medical device company. We had a lot of those who work in the medical sphere. Or TeamViewer, who is, um, it's, it's, um, it's a software. So to develop the same name software. So as you can see, they are really, really diverse. It depends on your interests um, and your background. What is important to mention with the hidden, hidden champions or in general, small mid-sized companies, for them, you usually need good German language skills. But they're actually not that hard to, to acquire, especially when you live here, you're surrounded by German speakers. It's actually not that difficult to learn German. And lastly, just some quick points on application and admission. Deadline 1st of June for everyone. We don't make a distinction. Application via UniAssist and only online. You should have a previous degree in the area of business, business law, economics or management, also English proficiency. B2 level is according to the European Union, and this means that you are an independent speaker, and that you can speak a little bit more than intermediate, so upper intermediate level. And we also would like you to write a, a declaration of your study motivation, so motivation letter. Fees, yes, we are public university, and usually it means free of charge, but um, yeah, everyone, from the European Union or not, everyone has to pay 200 euros administration fees. And then we have a moderate amount of 1,500 per semester for international or non-European students. This is because the state of Baden-Württemberg introduced those tuition fees a couple of years ago, so you will find them throughout um, the state. Okay, I'm, that's all from me. Thank you very much. I hope that I was able to give you a short insight into our program and yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much for your presentation, Katarina. I see that there are actually some questions in the Q&A. So um, if you want to take a look at some of them, um, if not, we can go ahead and hand it over to our next speaker. Again, I just want to quickly just show the map here for those of you who aren't as familiar. So next we have Nikila Radhaven, who is the academic coordinator um, from the School of Business, Economics and Society from FAU Elang Nuremberg. And here you can see on the map where um, that is. And it is in Nuremberg, which is the second most populated city in the state of Bavaria. Most of you know Munich, but you should also know Nuremberg. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you so much for introducing me. Um, I will also be showing a small presentation. So I will just turn on. Um, and hopefully now you should be able to see the presentation in full screen. Um, so as Jasmine already mentioned, um, I am the coordinator for um, the program International Business Studies um, Bachelors of Science. So, so far you've heard presentations about master's degrees and today now I will be presenting a little bit about one of the English, completely English bachelor program in international business studies. Um, so I'm from the University Friedrich Alexander uh, University of Erlangen Nuremberg. And as you saw, it's located um, well about one hour, it's it must be two hour train ride from, uh, from Munich. Um, and we have a lot of big companies around, so you should be aware of Nuremberg. And um, I'm from the Faculty of Business um, and Law. So welcome to today's presentation. Um, so for the agenda, I'll just give you some information about um, our university, and then I'll go into information about the business studies program, and then I'll also give you resources uh, where you can find further information in case you have questions. So um, the university was founded in 1743. Um, the FAU University itself, so it's spread, the campuses are spread across Erlangen and Nuremberg. Um, the business faculty is located in Nuremberg, um, and it's one of the biggest universities in northern Bavaria. We have roughly, from all the faculties combined, about 40,000 students and 500 partner universities. 
Um, so we're very cosmopolitan and international, and we have a very strong research focus. Um, so FAU is um, ranked 14 um, amongst the world's most innovative universities. So as I said, we have a very strong research focus. Specifically about this faculty, um, we have uh, two specific locations. Um, and you can see the pictures on the screen. Um, we have about 6,000 students, um, and we have roughly 1,500 graduates each year. Uh, we have we offer a variety of programs with over 20 study programs. And if you know something about German universities, um, they tend to be rather decentralized. So we have 35 chairs, um, which means different departments offering different. Um, like different focus. Um, so I'm at the chair of international management. There is a chair of global governance. There's a chair of statistics, et cetera. So really the different chairs. And we're amongst the most diversified. We have one of the most diversified course, course offers um, within Germany. Um, something specifically that you that would be of interest to those who are looking also to work part time while studying is uh, we're located, we're well connected in the region. Um, and that's why a lot of people who are studying um, also have a lot of working student positions. So these part time working positions um, when they study. And that is good for Nuremberg because we have huge companies like um, Adidas, Schaeffler, Puma, uh, Siemens, um, so a variety of companies, and also a lot of um, medium sized companies where you can find. Um, options to just gain some experience um, while you're also studying. So, as I mentioned before, we have a lot of partner universities. Um, so, FISO specifically has about one quarter, 140 partner universities um, spread across all the five continents, um, and we offer diverse ch uh, choice of courses. These are just some examples um, of the universities that we partner up with. This is important to know because as I will explain within our program, so something specifically about the Bachelor of Science in International Business Studies, um, we, so what you will learn during your study is, um, as you can imagine, it's a business study, so you will learn principle of businesses, so how businesses work, um, and the focus is a lot on international businesses, so not only in Germany or Europe, but more about connecting businesses. As you know, there are a lot of multinational corporations now. So how businesses transact when they're spread across continents. And we'll also learn how to solve international management tasks. Like we have courses such as um, international management itself, case studies in international management, innovation and entrepreneurship, um, human resources management, so you also learn how the transaction and processes within these international companies itself work. One thing very specific and unique about our program is um, we offer intercultural competence. Um, because as you can imagine, when you have a diversified team, team with multinational people with coming from different backgrounds, different nationalities, it's important that you understand the different backgrounds and how different cultures deal with each other. So we also offer courses um, like intercultural competence, um, which is a hands-on interactive seminar uh, where you learn how to deal with uh, people coming from different cultures. Specifically about this program, um, you will there are courses designed specifically for uh, the International Business Studies program, and that means. These courses are exclusive to the program, so it's a smaller group of people, and um, you will have more individual attention, more opportunity for interaction with the lecturers, professors, and tutors, um, and you'll just have like a close connected group with your peers. So um, this is something unique about this program. Also, um, as I mentioned, we have a lot of partner universities, and this is because within the program uh, you have to do a uh, mandatory semester abroad. So you will go to one of our partner universities and you'll be able to um, take part in different courses, learn about the new culture, um, and learn about a new language, maybe get to know people. Um, so this is one unique aspect of our program. Another thing is this is one of the few programs within Germany where all the courses 
are offered completely in English. So as a bachelor program to be offered completely in English, um, I don't know if there are that many options currently in Germany, but this is one of the options where you, you have the op where you will study all the courses completely in English. Um, another unique thing is you will learn two languages, um, so at least one new language, and the other language you have the opportunity to increase your current competence within the language. As I mentioned, you have a wide range of electives, and we do a lot of interdisciplinary work. Um, as I said, this includes we have this includes we have here you see an overview of how you do the different how the study program is split. Um, there are three main parts. So interdisciplinary um, is, for instance, you not only learn about business but you also learn about statistics, about economics, and within it, the electives you have the option to learn about law. Um, so it's really spread across different interests, with the primary focus on business, of course. So you have obligatory courses. Um, for instance, you learn about cause and effect of international trade. As I already mentioned, you have a specific course in cultural competence. Um, but you also have supplementary courses. Um, and the, within these electives, you're free to choose among any among the faculties here, whichever course you'd like to do. And you have a mandatory semester abroad. Um, you also have 40 PCPS. I don't know for those who are who are not aware of what PCPS is. I'm sure the other presenters mentioned, but it's the European credit system, and roughly gives you an idea of how much workload you have to um, for each course. So you have um, tools within which you learn about statistics, econometrics, um, reflection, where you'll have uh, guest lectures from companies teaching you about. How practical the practical relevance of theoretical foundations that you will have um, and then you also learn new languages at the end obviously you have to do a bachelor thesis which is um, an independent work so based on everything that you learned throughout the five semesters um, you will have to apply to a thesis um, and it's an independent work and um, you will come up, you, for instance, you can, one of the topics could be policy implications um, or other scientific questions about how multinational corporations deal with foreign direct investments. Um, so it can be a range of topics that you choose uh, based on what you have studied so far. And that is how the program itself works. Um, now, just some what you should bring with you uh, to apply to this program is obviously have an uh, interest in international business, but also some on international um, economics, because we also, as I said, we also have economic courses, um, a curiosity for foreign cultures, because you have a mandatory semester abroad, and also to learn new languages, because that's part of the program. Um, and if you want more information, I would encourage you to take a look at our web page. And also in the chat, you can see um, Nino sent a web page to um, a link to a web page where you can find the link to this web page. And you can find all necessary information in there. Um, in case you want to specifically contact me, um, here is my email address. And um, in case you have questions about generally about the study or the application process, um, I would encourage you to contact one of our study advisors. So I hope I managed to stay within the time frame, although um, I hope I didn't rush through it too much. Um, but yeah, in case you have further questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat or the Q&A. Thank, Thank you, you so much. No, and you did not rush. Don't worry about the time either. Um, we're not going to finish promptly. I won't cut everyone off at a certain time. We're flexible. We can go a little over time, so it's no problem. Um, but just to respect the other speaker's time, thank you so much. All of you have been great with kind of monitor monitoring that. Um, OK, so without further ado, I'll hand it over now to our last guest speaker, also um, from the same institution, from the same university. 
And um, she's actually had a webinar with us before. So maybe you recognize her if you've seen our last, um, our, our subject webinar. So we have Eva Bleisteiner, um, and she's going to be talking about the Bachelor in International Economic Studies um, from FAU Elange Nuremberg. And um, Nikila made a really great point. Um, so for students who are watching and are interested in bachelor's programs, Bachelor's programs taught completely in English in Germany are a little more um, difficult to come by than uh, graduate studies. So these two bachelor's programs that we're showing you today, take note of that and take advantage to answer any questions um, that you would like. So um, let's hand it over now to Eva. Thank you very much, Jasmine, for this nice introduction. I will just uh, share my screen now. Uh, but before I do that, I have to mention we do have a student with us who's uh, currently studying in the International Business Program. It's Lizzie. Lizzie, don't worry, you don't have to turn the camera on. But if all the um, audience does have a question, just post it into the chat and Lizzie can answer them from, let's say, an uh, insider student. So uh, maybe this is a little help for you. And now I will share my screen. <laughs> Um, as Jasmine mentioned before, um, um, I'm from the same school that uh, Nikila is from, so we are colleagues and we know each other. And um, I will not talk about the school, uh, since I think you've heard about the school before, since Nikila talked very uh, nice about the school and the region of Nuremberg, so um, I think this is not necessary. Um, I will um, straight get to the program and um, I will hope to uh, keep it uh, short and simple for you. Um, I, first, um, I have to say that the two programs do have a lot in common. There are some overlaps, but we will get to that very soon. Um, so, uh, I will talk about the Bachelor of Science in International Economic Studies. And um, we also do have, um, like the International Business Study Program, we do have um, the main competence fields, um, four of them. And um, first of all, uh, the principle of economics will give you a, a solid foundation about um, economics in general. Um, we will look at international um, economics and policy. And um, this is how um, uh, policies um, how, um, affect the economy and the society and act between each other. Um, in the field of empirical and quantitative skills, uh, you will uh, learn various tools in your classes. Um, which will give you a foundation about uh, data analysis, and you can analyze your own data if you're interested in. And um, we will have um, economic intervention and um, coordination across borders. This means you're not only talking about domestic problems, you're um, also talking about international and um, European um, problems and globalization, of course. So this is very short, the competence profi profile about the, of the study program. Um, um, what is it um, that makes us so special? What are the advantages? Um, sorry, I think my screen just sort of broke. <laughs> are you able to see to see my screen? Jasmine, can you just tell me? Yes. Because, okay, yeah, perfect. Sorry. What are the advantages of the IES? Program? I don't know, but because my my screen says uh, it stopped, but if you see it, oh then no, it's not, I, I don't see know it. why. So, okay. <laughs> I see thank it. you very much. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, we, as uh, Nikila already mentioned, we are one of or we are one of the uh, very few uh, programs that are um taught fully in English. So if you start with us, um, it's not necessary to have German skills. It's uh, nice to have, but it's not necessary. And um, we also have uh, the advantage you can uh, learn at least one new language. You have one language advanced, which is mo and you have one other. And we have a very broad uh, field of languages you can learn with us. And we have a wide range of electives. So you can um, pick or from all the 45 chairs we do have at our school, you can pick electives. We do have uh, interdisciplinary coursework. That means you don't only meet uh, people from your study program, you also meet people who study, let's say, um, just uh, international business or maybe information systems and so on. And we have courses that are who, who, which are specifically for the I, I, 
IES program. That means you have small classes. You only have 30 people around you and you can get into with your peers into interaction and discussions and so on. And also we do have a compulsory semester abroad and um, we have 140 partner university all around the globe. And this is also a very unique experience, I would say. So um, if we just check out how exactly does it look like? So we have compulsory courses, which um, are um, ADECTS. This means, as I mentioned before, a basic principles of economics and business administrations. And of course, these empirical methods and data analysis, and also um, social, political, and legislative aspects of globalization, which is also compulsory for you. And we have the um, we have some electives as well, as I mentioned. Um, we have a 45 to study abroad. This means if you go to your semester abroad, you have to um, take at least 20 ECTS, but it's your you are free uh, which classes you will choose. That means you get you um, talk to your coordinator which classes you are willing to take, and you can specif um, specialize yourself while doing your semester abroad. And you can take um, 25 electives at the home department. This means some sort of um, the economics department. And you have 40 ECTS, um, which is 15 years tools. This means, as I already mentioned, uh, statistics and um, um, so on. Reflection means um, you, have, uh, you are discussing current topics of economics in small groups, which is quite interesting because you get in contact with your professors and your peers. And uh, the 15 ECTS for languages, as I already mentioned, you have one language you is, which is new to you and one language which is, which is in advanced uh, level. And if you finish your study program, uh, you will write your bachelor thesis, uh, which is um, an independent work on a given pro pro problem. And this is for 15 ECTS. So this might sound a little bit abstract for you, and uh, to make it a little bit more clear, I tried to um, give you some ideas what the subject area is about. And I have some examples for possible questions that will be answered within the fields. So for international economics, um, you will learn how the economy works. So um, one possible question is, um, how does the price of a cucumber sandwich is related to the actions of the central bank? So as you see, you look at the big picture and um, yeah, of course, it's just one example question. Um, and one, one question which might be interesting from, um, is uh, which is interesting if you look at, let's say, um, international politics, law and society is understand how, um, who makes rules and why. So why is it possible that I can drive from Lisbon to Stockholm without a border control? Why is this possible? And uh, one interesting question is also um, for international business is why uh, can Apple only pay little tax in Europe, which is still interesting or discussed uh, like now. So these are only examples, um, which I hope makes it a little bit more um, tangible for you. Um, yeah. So, um, which is, might also be um, interesting for you is um, what are uh, career prospects and where you can get further information. So, first of all, there is a selection process by numerous clauses. This means this is your grade with your from your um, uh, from your degree, and um, we take there are approximately. I think the, the number is higher from, in comparison to last year. I think it's approximately 50 uh, spots that, that are open. Um, but I can't tell by heart. It's, it depends how many people apply and how good the grades are they apply with. So um, it's just the number. And last year, it, there were 30 spots. And I think the number is now high or it will or be higher now. And uh, English language skills are obligatory. And the further language um, is may be nice and we will check if there is affinity to math. So this might be interesting for you if you want to um, apply. And I think the application is open till, uh, um, till the end of July this year. So you can still apply if you're looking for an interesting study program. 
um, which might also be very interesting for you are career opportunities. So there are a few um, professional positions in a variety of institutions that are concerned with um, economic decisions. You might not think about at first glance. Um, for example, um, banks are very uh, glad to take um, people with an economic degree. And moreover, um, supranational institutions like the EU and public sector in general and um, nonprofit organizations as well. And um, if you finish your bachelor degree and you decide to move further on into a master program, we also have some interesting master programs at our school that might be interesting for you. First of all, we do have a master of science and economics, uh, which is for semesters and it's taught fully in English as well. And it has its main focus on labor and public economies, health and energy markets. And we do also have a master program in international business studies, which is also for semesters and um, taught fully in English. And um, the main focus is on international business administration um, with a certain emphasis on a certain region, for example, let's say uh, China or uh, Latin America and so on. So this might also be interesting for you. And we also do have a web page, so if you're interested, you can check this out. And I think it's already in the chat, so just take a look at the web page. And if you do have specific questions concerning uh, the content of the study program, you can ask the um, regarding the program structure and you're on. You can ask the coordinator Maximilian Pönlein, who can unfortunately not be here today, but I'm stepping in for him. You can ask him and if you have a general question about the application process and time and so on, you can ask our um, student advice service, which would be Bianca Dista and Susanne Heinrich, and they can give you some advice on um, how to apply to the programs. And I would be very happy if I will see some of you um, in this fall already in Nuremberg and with our very interesting study programs. And I thank you very much for your attention. And if there's still any questions, just post it into the chat and we will try to answer them. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much um, for your presentation, Eva. Um, sorry, I think there was a, maybe like a little technical issue. So you said your screen stopped sharing. I could see your slideshow the whole time. And on Facebook, we could also see it. We checked, but I think some people couldn't see it. Some people saw a black screen. I saw everything. So I think maybe some people saw everything and some people didn't, mm -hmm. but it's no problem. Um, again, the content and, and what you're saying to us is the most important part. Thank so, you. Yeah, so I, I want to start the the Q&A session now. We have had a lot of questions. It's great. So far, we have 38 answered questions, and we still have four sitting here. And um, because we can't answer everyone's questions, um, I'm going to take them in, in groupings of topic that I've seen that have been asked a lot. And the first one has to do with admissions or eligibility requirements, which all of you have shared in your presentations very clearly. And um, it is also on the course websites of the programs that we shared in the chat section, but students still have questions. So I think I will just mention to students that when it comes to eligibility requirements, this is pretty, um, pretty strict. So, um, I mean, in, not just in Germany, but generally, but especially in Germany, this is not going to be very flexible if you need um, maybe a certain level um, on, on like a certain IELTS score or TOEFL score. Um, it, it's strict. So if you want to apply anyways, even though you don't meet these qualifications, you might be wasting your time. So make sure you check the eligibility requirements. Many of you are asking if you can get in with topics, um, having studied something that is not as relevant before. So when it comes to the previous degree, um, for example, one of the presentations said that it's really important to have social skills and to have kind of, um, I won't say customer service skills, but I'll just say kind of like business correspondence skills. And maybe a more relevant degree in a previous degree will be important for that. When it comes to the previous degree requirement, also for bachelors, um, this is especially a question for the two bachelors programs when it comes to course module requirements. 
is it really is it flexible if students can demonstrate that even though I don't have um, a prior education in in business or in economics or anything like this, how flexible is it for students to maybe demonstrate that they have the sufficient skills or adequate skills to partake in the bachelor's program, for example? Either one of you can answer. Um, I'm directing it to the two bachelor's programs. Or the master's programs, you can also answer. Previous degree, what's important? I think actually it's uh, hard to answer because um, the selection process is um, only based on the numerous clauses, the first yeah. um, thing we're looking at. So um, actually it's not, not mm -hmm. easy to answer. Uh, Nikila, you can just um, add if I say something wrong, <laughs> but I think this is actually the point. So it's hard to tell for, as I can say. Yeah, um, same. So, um, I mean, because the selection is primarily based on the numerous clauses, um, I don't know how it would be possible to check. Um, but I think, I mean, in a lot of universities in Germany, are especially for this bachelor, these bachelor programs, um, they're compared to the German Abitur. Um, and the DA80 webpage has a specific link where you can help assess your entrance qualification. Um, so, but apart from that, yeah, it's kind of difficult to answer. Yeah, yeah of course. Answer. Yeah. Um, Nino, if you could do me the favor in sharing the link for the Anabin database article, this is the, where you can check for those students who are interested in bachelor's program exactly how your leaving school certificate ranks on the German higher education scale, uh, whether you can go straight and start a study program or if you need to do a one-year preparatory course called a Studienkolleg, um, and you can see that on the Anabin database. Unfortunately, the Anabin database is in English, but in our Anabin article, we have screenshots and translating everything, explaining how to use it and what you enter, depending on where you're from and so on. Um, okay, so I, I will just gear up, uh, change the question maybe instead towards the master's programs, because I see so many questions about eligibility requirements. How flexible is it with the previous degree? Maybe if someone has a bachelor's I don't know, let's say in some humanities topic and they decide, you know what, I really would like to do business. I, I'm not sure it's going to be possible, um, especially with the ECTS required. Um, but if they can demonstrate that they have the skills, if they explain it well in some internship, I'm not sure how flexible is that? Yeah, maybe, well, I will just <laughs> quickly start to answer the question. Um, since we're kind of, well, we're a private public university, uh, not, not a public university, a private university. Um, so we do have our, let's say, own criteria, which are somehow sometimes more or seem to be more flexible um, compared to the public universities. So for us, it's most important that we do have, of course, a first academic business related qualification with a minimum of 180 ECTS. That means um, just as an example, if you're coming from, let's say, a different section when you're when you, for example, studied tourism, which is somehow business, but not really international business related uh, topics, um, we do need to to see that um, the student had at least 30 ECTS during the bachelor's degree um, related to economic topics. So what we're doing is we're checking every transcript, transcript of records, and then we will see if we can find um, 30 ECTS related economic topic points. I don't know if that makes sense, but this is this is what we're usually doing. And in case if we cannot find these e or if the e 30 ECTS are missing, is that we are offering kind of a pre um, semester program where you or where the student is gaining the missing knowledge, the missing 30 ECTS in uh, three to four months in advance, so that the student can get started right away with the, the master program afterwards. So this is what we are doing at CBS. Uh, maybe just some points for me and um, for us, it's important that you have a bachelor degree in, in management and finance. And that's actually for the benefit of the student because we just made the experience that it's too difficult. We are master of science, so we, we do focus on quantitative finance 
research. So it's too difficult for students. What we have is the opportunity, we have an international management MBA at our university, and this is open for everyone. So it doesn't depend what bachelor degree you have. And a certain amount of the students, if they can prove that they are qualified, can then do a double degree with us. So this is an opportunity, but you definitely need like good basics in, in, in business or management. So it's not, it's too difficult for students if they studied chemistry or engineering. This, it's really just too difficult for them, but there is the opportunity to do the international management. And then if they still want to switch to do a double degree with us. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm glad to, um, that you could both clarify that because I think some students think like, oh, well, maybe if I just tell them like, but actually I have these skills and I think it's different. You really have to be able to kind of demonstrate um, whether it's some sort of certificate, your leaving school certificate, the ECTS and so on, these course modules, it's very important. Okay. So to our next question, um, it's about employability. I see many students asking questions about job prospects after graduation. So I will start off by saying that any student that graduates from a German institution has a right to an 18 month visa where they can search for a job. And the key part is it has to be a job within your field. So um, you can't finish your program and I don't know, get a job as a barista and think, perfect, now I'll get a work visa. It doesn't really work that way unless you went to some technical school to do exactly that. Um, that's not really how it works. It has to be in your field and you have to prove that it is relevant to what you studied and, and what you do. Um, when it comes to employability, many of uh, the presentations today feature maybe some partner companies, especially when it comes to these big global players in, in Bavaria, for example, and also in Baden-Württemberg, um, when it comes to employability, maybe I'm sure you don't have off the top of your head the percentage of students who, I don't know, find employment within six months or something like this. But maybe if you could speak to that a little bit, um, the types of job opportunities, some of them were mentioned um, and, and shown in the presentations. But just to come back on that, just because we have so many questions about finding a job, if um, anyone wants to give some light on that. Maybe I'll, I'll just start. <laughs> um, yeah, as I already mentioned, uh, Baden-Württemberg is kind of known, at least within Germany, as somehow a powerhouse. So um, right now it's really difficult to tell. We have a pandemic, really, really difficult to tell. But prior to the pandemic, I would say um, 80 to 90 percent could find something. And as I said in my presentation, a lot of our students worked in the larger ones because not everyone like had the German language skills. We don't have a compulsory internship at our program. So that's why we can't offer you like definitely a list where you can get a place. But what a lot of our students did prior to the um, pandemic, and even now some of them got it, they can take a semester academic leave of absence and they can do an internship. And a lot of our students did that. And for instance, some of them also wrote like a master thesis with the company and then they got like straight away a job. So um, you, it depends on your background. It depends how well your German skills are. Then your opportunities are much, much higher because we do have a lot of middle-sized companies that are not well known, but um, you do have really good chances for that. Okay, does anybody else want to talk about job um, opportunities um, and maybe also talk about how that relates and ties to German language skills? Um, I think some students, I would say it depends on the field, but I think it's pretty important to speak German. But again, it just depends on what you want to do and what company you want to work for. Yes, that is absolutely true. So usually, of course, we are recommending for all students to, even if they're studying an English language, to, to do a German language course to have the basic knowledge. But of course, they have to be aware that after they're graduating, although it is maybe an English speaking company, they, yeah, they're usually asking for German language knowledge, not to be on a level as a native speaker is, of course, but of course, even though it's an English speaking company, the daily business life in the office itself, usually it's in German when you're having a lot of German colleagues. So I think it's just as well, let's say a personal 
thing just to 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 be aware that even if you're working in English level or uh, in English language and writing emails in English and communicating with clients in English, maybe your colleagues are mostly from Germany and they're speaking German. So um, this is something usually the foreign nationals offices are asking for when it comes up for um, a blue card, for example. So. I think um, you should have a B1 level when you're looking for a job in Germany. So you don't have to be a C1 level or native speaker level, but to have a conversation going on, like uh, like let's say a real life talk going on, I think this is important that that you have this this knowledge. You don't have to be perfect, but you should be a, you should be prepared that you're not like surviving just speaking in English if you would like to stay in Germany for a longer period. So this is just my my experience. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's important for students to to note that it's it's good to learn to learn some German and to not just rely. I mean, I our whole platform is in English, and with my colleagues, I speak English, Spanish, or German depending on who I'm talking to. Um, in our group meetings, we'll speak in English, but depending on who you're talking to, you just use a mix every day. And I think that's very true to have some foundation of German. Um, when it comes to internships, which is, I saw just, I think, one question about internships. Usually we have a lot, but I will just ask it when it comes to internships. Um, so I think for one of the programs, I don't remember which one, I didn't see like a specific layout of the modules. Um, but I just wanted to ask about internships, um, how that works. Is it flexible for students or there's not as much of a focus on that? I think there was just one question about internships, so we don't have to focus quite as much. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I, I, I can... I mean, I have already said a little bit, maybe again. Um, <laughs> we are, well, as I said, it's not compulsory, but a lot of students do that. Right now, it's quite difficult, but still possible. And I mean, the pandemic will be over, will be, at some point, will be fine again. In We are quite um, flexible, I would say. And most students, what I would advise for them um, is, for instance, when they finish basically everything and only their master thesis is open, so this is the only thing they still have to do, then I always recommend to take a semester of leave because then they don't have to pay those 1,500 euros, only the administration fees, and then one semester at a company like Daimler or Bosch. So we are really flexible for um, with that. I think in general, public universities, you, you are allowed to take up to two semesters of leave. And what some of our students did, for instance, they took two, they did one semester intense German language course, and in the second semester they um, did an internship, and then they wrote their master thesis and maybe started even in the company they, they did an internship in. So this is something, for instance, if the student can, can afford it, I would definitely mm -hmm. recommend, and if you have a semester of leave, um, you don't need to pay the tuition fees of 1500 so yeah. Okay, um, and I want to, um, I think, not end the webinar just yet, but just with one last question, which is, um, I saw some questions about um, fees, tuition fees, and scholarships, and this is um, a really relevant topic for most students that are interested. Um, I do mention, and I still think that you should still not focus on tuition-free programs and look for the program that is right for you. Um, again, we did mention earlier, we talked about Van Württemberg. It's just a marginal tuition fee. I say marginal, I know it's still 1,500 euros per semester. Again, I come from the US where it's a lot more than that. Um, and so I just want students to understand that there are also scholarship opportunities, but this, does not come from the university typically because generally universities in Germany don't charge tuition fees. Funding is a little different here and it won't come directly from universities, but that is different for maybe private universities. Um, and they might offer tuition reduction or tuition waivers or scholarships based on need and so on. So um, if I'm not mistaken, if or if any one of you, if there is a scholarship that is offered exclusively by your university that is separate from like these um, funding institutions 
that we have here in Germany and the Begabenförderungswerke and also like the DAAD and so on. If there's any scholarship from the universities, um, please, uh, would you like to talk about that? Or um, are there no really funding opportunities? And I say no funding opportunities. It's not meant to sound as a bad thing for students. It generally funding doesn't come when it comes to scholarships from universities. But if any of you have any information on that, please shed some light. Either one. I just want to say that in Bavaria, we don't have tuition fees. We just have a semester contribution. This is approximately about 100 euro. I think a bit more, but I can't say by heart. Uh, but that's it. So we don't have tuition fees. Period. <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> yeah, um, we we do have Baden-Württemberg has uh, tuition fees since a couple of years, um, but as you said, just mean that it's um, it. We are not a country like Anglo-Saxon countries where you usually have high tuition fees, and then there is kind of the culture of scholarship. So yeah, we don't have that. What I usually say is they should check like the major things like DAD or there is this Deutschland stipendium, German stipendium. Um, but yeah, overall we don't have the culture and maybe at some point Baden Württemberg will abolish the tuition fees. It already happened once, maybe they will do that again. So <laughs> yeah. Maybe to, to add, since, since CBS is a pr private university, of course, we do have tuition fees. Um, and this is why we, we do offer scholarships, different, different types. And yeah, depending on the, let's say the students, um, yeah, depending on what the student wants and the student needs. So we have different options. Um, just as an example, we are usually working on having different options available for students during the, during the pandemic, for example, if, if students could not join uh, Germany in time for starting in time with us, on campus and, and they started online, we offered a um, so-called tuition fee waiver of 1,500 euros um, just to, since they could not join in person, this is why we said like, okay, maybe if you started online, we're offering this kind of reduction just to, to make life a bit easier, of course, for those who, who, who had to stay in their countries before coming to Germany, just as an example. So this is quite um, yeah, flexible and dynamic, but we do offer different options in regards to scholarships. Yeah, and as students should note that um, many private universities here in Germany do exactly this. They offer some sort of tuition fee reduction or, or scholarship and so on. Um, so this is really normal. So don't let a private university deter you because actually there are really many great private universities in Germany and um, they never have a problem with getting applications. So they're <laughs> receiving them for a reason. So please take a look at them. And um, it is just important to note for students that whenever you are looking um, at these programs if you're thinking oh but if i'm why am i going to pay tuition when like these great universities in the us and uk have tuition then i'm gonna go there well what you might not know is that germany ranks third in the world for internationally top ranked universities the first is the us and the second is the uk but germany is third and what sets germany apart is that the top ranked institutions are public universities and there are also now some private universities that are getting up there. So um, these marginal tuition fees are just that, they are marginal if there are any tuition fees. Um, and I'm telling you from experience from my bachelor's in the US that I won't even tell you how much it costs. <laughs> um, so please um, keep an open mind and look for the perfect program for you. And I see that we don't have any more questions left. We talked about scholarships, about job opportunities, employability, um, and so much more. And again, eligibility requirements, make sure you look at them carefully in the course websites that we shared in the chat section. So we will send an email to all of you within the next 10 days with an overview of today's webinar with some resources from the webinar and presentations. But for now, thank you so much for joining. Um, if no one has anyone out, any more questions, then I'll go ahead and end today's webinar. Thank you so much to all of our guest speakers for joining us today and talking about your wonderful study programs. And we hope to see you again in a future webinar. And thank you to Nino for moderating and answering so many questions so quickly. All right, bye.